Garcia will also be available to watch later in the afternoon, posted on both our Facebook and YouTube pages. God promises Jeremiah that a new covenant will be made in the future, a covenant that will allow all people to know God by heart. The church sees this promise fulfilled in Christ, who draws all people to himself when he is lifted up on the cross. Our baptismal covenant draws us to God's heart through Christ and draws God's love and truth into our hearts. We join together in worship, sharing in word, song, and meal, and we leave strengthened to share God's love with all the world. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Let us confess our sin with whispering voices, trusting in the abundant grace of God. I invite you all to stand as you're able. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you love so much. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey now in the way of Jesus. Amen.
We will read Psalm 51 responsibly. I will read the odd verses, and you may follow with the even verses. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, my tears be to you, and have you to me. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Amen. 
Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me with the joy of your salvation. To see me with your bodies. A reading from Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he had suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
life seems to be getting back to normal. And yet, we're left to wonder, what is normal after Lazarus is lifted up from the dead? Now, Jesus is in Jerusalem, like everyone else, for the feast of Passover. Yet even the greatest of Jewish festivals doesn't seem to hold a candle to the light of the world. After all, Jesus has just raised his friends from, the, from death to life, with only a glance toward the heavens and the strength of his voice. Word of Jesus' ministry and his healing and other miracles have traveled far and wide. Those who come to the city, who should be focused on the temple and Passover, are instead gathered around Jesus. The Pharisees and the other religious leaders feel powerless against this Galilean who claims to have come from God. Perhaps they're afraid that with so many people believing in Jesus and following him, that the Romans may come and destroy their temple, stripping them of their authority. And their worst fears seem to come true as the crowds who had been at Lazarus' tomb begin to tell others about all that they have seen. Soon everyone is buzzing about Jesus, the Jews, and the Greeks as well. Finally, some of the Greeks approach one of Jesus' disciples, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Well, seeing is believing in John's Gospel, so when they ask to see Jesus, they may actually be expressing their desire to believe in him and to follow him. We don't really know whether they were successful in getting to meet Jesus, but we do know that their interest sparks a response from Jesus, who seems to change the focus in the discussion. It's no longer enough to come and see. From this hour forward, those expressing interest are invited to come and be with Jesus. Followers are invited to give up their current ways of life to follow him. They're invited to die and break open to experience new life sprouting up like a blade of wheat and bearing fruit for God. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. But do we really? Do we actually want to see Jesus? Or do we simply go along, just mouthing the words because really seeing Jesus could cause a kind of discomfort that we'd rather not experience? Seeing Jesus could change our whole lives. Do we? Do we really want to see Jesus? The inquiring visitors are identified simply as Greeks, or perhaps they're other. In John's Gospel, however, they represent the world that God loves, the world that God saves, the world that rejects this presence of God among them, the one who seems to be shaking things up and turning their world upside down. Yet, at the very same time, these inquisitive few represent us. They ask for something that we ourselves might ask, should ask. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Did you know that those very words in this short little verse is actually carved into pulpits around the world. Why? Because we all need this reminder. We come to church or we view worship online to experience God's presence in Jesus. We come or we watch to hear the words of comfort and healing. 
to experience God's own love and forgiveness, to be fed by the scriptures, sermons, hymns, and prayers, to be among God's very presence, the body of Christ, to receive Jesus himself and experience welcome at his table. Yes, we do want to see Jesus, to experience, to feel, to taste, to smell, to believe, and to follow in his footsteps. Even in the best of times, however, this is not always an easy thing to do. Jesus reminds us of this, that to follow him, we must give up what we hold so dear. We must give up our lives, our ways of living, our way of focusing all too often on ourselves and our own wants and desires. Jesus invites us to give up our self-focus to instead center ourselves on God and others. Jesus invites us to follow by allowing our hearts and our minds to be broken wide open so that new life can burst forth bearing fruit not only in our own lives but in the lives of those who experience Christ in us through our words and our actions of faith. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. They're so anxious to lay their eyes on him. They even engage in a little first century social networking through Philip, whom Jesus had friended early in his ministry. They've heard so much about Jesus, who's been inviting folks to come and see from the very beginning. They've heard all about his amazing signs and miracles that of his recently raising Lazarus from the dead, turning water into wine, giving a man his sight, and healing countless others. It's easy to see how all this would lead them to want to see more, to see, believe in, and follow the one who could do such things. Jesus invites all of his followers, including us, to a different way of life, a new life, eternal life, even as he himself approaches the hour of his death. Soon, Jesus will be lifted up on the cross, where he will lay down his life for his friends. Just as a grain of wheat falls to the earth in order to fulfill its true purpose, Jesus is lifted up from the earth in order to fulfill his own, so that he may draw all people to himself. In baptism, we too experience death. The death of our old selves, our way of living, through the word and waters of baptism, we too are lifted up to new life in Jesus. We are marked with the cross of Christ and claimed forever. We are broken open to receive the seeds of faith planted by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Seeds that will grow and be nourished through every moment that we experience the presence of Jesus in our lives. As this Lenten season comes to a close, we will follow Jesus all the way to Golgotha, all the way to the cross, where we will stand beneath it together with countless others, including those who asked so long ago, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. The cross of Christ is there. In the faces of those suffering from the pandemic, in the faces of tired, 
healthcare workers and first responders, in the faces of hopeful people getting their very first COVID vaccination, in the faces of the poor, those who struggled long before COVID, and those who've lost their jobs or their businesses because of it. The cross of Jesus is with us in the midst of our stark reality as we wonder what normal truly is after all of our experiences over the last 12 months. Yet perhaps it is in these heart-wrenching moments that we can begin to catch a glimpse of life at its fullest, that we can begin to experience the presence of God in Jesus through those around us, that we can begin to understand what dying and living in Christ truly means. Today, we hear Jesus' promise when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. It is for such a time as this that Jesus has gathered us together to experience new life in him and to share God's love for us all.
those watching as well as everyone else are urged to reach out to others in whatever way we're able. Check in with each other as a sign of God's love and God's peace for us all. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. After the words, hear us, O God, you may respond, your mercy is great. You wash us through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence. And you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O God. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace. And give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable. Those who need healing of mind or body. Especially those on our prayer list. And those we remember now out loud or in our hearts.
for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. All are invited to take part from where you are seated. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let us pray. Loving God, for your goodness, we have this bread and wine or grape juice to offer, which has come forth from the earth, and human hands have made it. May we know your presence to share it, so that we may know your presence in all things. Amen.
Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, as I said earlier, this video will be posted uh, and uploaded this afternoon on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Also, I have now been vaccinated, and um, after Easter, when I get back, I will be resuming visitations, and I look forward to visiting folks. So if you know anyone um, that needs someone uh, to visit, I know Margaret has given me a couple of people, but if you know anyone who needs a visit sooner rather than later, please let me know. Also, we have a joyous celebration um, Peg Bandy, who is a uh, veteran of the United States Marine Corps, is celebrating her 100th birthday on March 27th at 10 a.m. at the Tully Municipal Building on Meeting House Road in Tully, off of Route 11. If you'll not be attending, cards can be sent, and we have an address here. I think, um, Mary, did you say they were going to do a parade? I heard that, yes. So a car, like, drive by kind of thing? So in, in any case, wow, a hundred years, what a wonderful celebration to to offer. At, at least maybe a, a card giving your, your wishes to her. I think um, the other announcements are up there. Does anyone else have any announcements? I kind of knew you would, Pat. reservations in advance? No. no. So they can just show up with money. Right. And you'll take any money people want to give you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a takeout only, so depending on the weather, it might be driving through. So, so what, what are we having besides um, ham and scallop potatoes? Green beans and a dessert, yum. Okay, and how much is it? $10 per person. $10, that's really good, with dessert. You can't beat it. Yep. I'll be ordering mine probably tomorrow, so. Uh, so this coming Saturday, 4 to 7 p.m. is the serving time. So. 4 to? 7. 4 to 7, so if we were here at church, we couldn't have picked it up at noon or one o'clock. We have to wait till four o'clock, which means some people who would be going home would have to be driving back at four. Oh, it's a Saturday. Duh. You know, I, I just... Well, there you go. There you go. So Saturday, the 27th, from 4 to 7, $10, good food, you can't beat it. Thank, Thank you. Does anybody else have any announcements? No. Okay. Well, then I invite you to stand as you're able for the blessing, and then we'll do the sending him since I already have you standing. Okay. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. <laughs> Till we